When we go to blur different objects, in this case, we're gonna be blurring faces. Sometimes we run into issues with the different tools that we'll be using. So I tried to grab a shot that uh, shows some of those issues that we would have. So let's say we wanted to blur this guy's face here throughout this shot. If we take a look throughout the shot, we have people that are walking in front of him and sometimes we can't actually see his face. If we were to have the tracker go through and track this, we can see that the tracker is going to get kind of confused and not know how to deal with this. So I think this shot will be a good one to show you how we actually problem solve for issues like that. We'll also dive into tracking multiple faces in a shot and using different types of blurs. So I just threw this shot onto my timeline and from here we'll go right over into the color page. All right, so now let's get started. If we were to go right into blurring, so that's this button over here, we have our blur and we increase the blur, we can see that we're blurring the whole screen. That's obviously not what we want. We wanna be able to blur just the particular area. So let's reset that. And we're gonna come over to this button right here, which looks like a little mask. And this goes into all of our different windows. From here, there's this little circle. We'll click on that and it pops up a little circle here. And now we can take this object and move it over to whatever the element is that we want to track. If you currently don't see the element, you can move in your playhead wherever you want until you see that full element that you want to track. So I'm gonna go right there, grab one of the corners, bring it in. I'm actually gonna zoom in by just hitting scroll wheel, to zoom in, holding down middle mouse button so we can move around our screen a bit, right to there, and we'll bring this in. One thing that you'll notice is that there are three circles. We have one here, one there, it's a little brighter, and an outer one. The gray circles, the outer one and this inner one, are just the softening. We can grab the little handle here or come down here to softening to change that. And that's just going to, it'll be really hard and then it, you know, it'll soften out as it goes. So there is our uh, mask. Now if we went over into blur and we turned on blur, we'll see that we're now blurring him. But as we go through our shot, we can see that it's obviously not following. So we'll come back over to the power window and just make sure that this is all set up accordingly how we want it to be. And we'll come over to this little button here. This goes into our tracker. There's a couple of different trackers in the color page. As you can see, we have a couple of different options here, but we just want to be on the tracker window, which is the first one. So from here, all we would have to do is click this little button here, and this is going to track forward and backwards because I'm obviously in the middle of the shot where the other ones will just track one way or the other way. So I'll click this button and it'll track forward and backwards. And we can see that the tracker has done quite a lot of weird stuff. One, it's kind of gone a bit wonky, and the other thing is it's gone completely off screen. And that's gonna be for a number of different reasons. So let's first just go in and reset this because that tracker isn't going to work at all and I'll explain here in a sec. So there are multiple different things that you can track. We can track the pan and tilt, so it's gonna be the up and down, left and right. The zoom, so as he comes closer, this window will become bigger. As he goes further away, it'll become smaller. We have rotation if we were to track it spinning or whatever it may be, and 3D, which was a lot of that uh, deforming that we've seen. So we don't really need the rotation or the 3D. So from here, I'm just going to just have these three on and let's track that again. And now it looks a little bit better, but we can see that it's gone off the screen because it was picked up by this uh, group of people here. So now how would we go into fixing that? Well, we could come to that portion and we could move this, but let me show you something. Currently we're on clip. And what Clip does is any adjustments that we make to the tracker, it's going to attract, uh, affect the whole clip. So think of it kind of like an offset. So if I was to move this straight down, we can see that that tracker is still there, but it's now down at the ground. So that's not really what we want. Instead, what we wanna do is we wanna do this frame. So this is going to allow you to adjust per frame. So let's... Uh, Actually, let's reset that because I think I messed up my whole tracker here and we'll just do a quick track. Okay, and we'll just kind of go through this shot and see where it messed up. So right there was the first mess up, right? And then here was the big mess up. So let's just focus on the big one for now. Remember, coming back over to frame, we can now adjust this and it'll keep all of the other tracking information and um, not affect it, but affect right where we have it'll add a keyframe down here. So as I come over a bit more, I can then bring this back over to here and we can continue the track forward. And we can see it was taken off the screen again. 
So let's actually come back to about here and let's fix that. And then we'll track forward. And we'll come back and see right where it was moved. So I'll just move it back over to where I know he is. Back over to where he is. Back over to where he is. And then we'll just go until I see him again. Right there. And I'm now I'm just using my arrow keys to go left and right to make sure that he is still there. Okay. And let's go back. All right. So I would say right about there. And now we can start to continue that track. And we can see that it has been pretty successful so far. And it's done pretty well. There could be a, maybe a couple of little adjustments here, but remember, we're just concerned with his identity. And a lot of times you wanna go quick with this, depending on how many you have to do. So once we have that done, now we can go in and add in our blur. And now throughout the shot, let's go full screen. We can see that his identity is now concealed. Can't really see it. We can always go in and like we were just doing the adjustment right there was actually a mess up. It goes over. So I would say probably right in there. We would go in and let's go back to the power window and adjust that over. And it looks like there was still a little bit of a mess up. If that's really necessary, you can go in and fix that accordingly. And that is looking pretty good. We can't really see him. We could add a bit more blur if that was something that we wanted to do. Um, the other thing that we can do is we can also uh, feather this if we want to or not feather it as much. We can still change the size. Remember, it's just concerned with uh, where its current position is and not so much that other information. Man, the old school days of interlace. <laughs> okay, so that's one way that we could do for that blur. We can also come up to the effects. And if we open this up, we have a couple of blurs here. We can always just type in here blur and we can see all the different blurs. But this is going to be the most common blur, the mosaic blur. And that's where we get that whole pixeled effect. And we have some options here to change the density of pixels or the lack of pixels, if that is something that you wanted to do. But that's how we would go in and do that. Now, we set this up in such a way that now we added in this particular blur, right? This custom blur here. And what if we wanted to blur, let's say her face. Uh, all we would have to do is just come back over to the power windows and we can see in our list, we currently do not have another circle. We could grab a rectangle and use that if we wanted to, but that's not what we want. So let's just uh, turn that off. We can actually come up here and add in another circle. And then uh, for this, we could then bring this over to their face. And for now, let's just turn this off and we could bring this over and do the same exact thing that we were doing before. When we go over into the tracker now, we'll see that there's no information here. And that's because this is the current active window. If we were to click on this window, we can see all of the tracking information for that window. But this one, we want to track this one. So this is the one that we would now go through and do the tracking. Obviously, we would have to do quite a few adjustments, but I just wanted to show you how you would actually go in to do that. And then you just have to turn this on and then both parties will now be tracked. The other thing that I can say is if we go back over into the tracker, we can see that now we have two trackers. If we were to track five or six different people here, we can see that it would be kind of confusing. So you can actually click right in here and we can give them a name. So we can give them a name. Obviously you could say like, okay, white shirt and black dress or whatever it may be, but that's how we would then be able to identify the difference between them. You could easily just click and delete them if that's something that is needed. Uh, we can go into each one and adjust them. Just remember that down here we have to have the particular uh, power window active. If this is uh, off, then we obviously wouldn't have those controls. We just have to go to power window and then the one that's selected is the one that we're going to see those options down here. So that kind of concludes uh, all the different ways to track, dealing with issues with tracking and things obscuring the thing that we're trying to track and correcting that by coming in and using the frame adjustments instead of just the clip adjustments. Uh, but hopefully that kind of helps you with going in and blurring objects that you need to in a scene. With that being said, if you're interested in some free titles, there's a link in the description to my website to those free titles. On there, I also have a bunch of different courses going over everything DaVinci Resolve and a bunch of pre-made assets like titles and transitions. 
But I think that concludes everything for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, have a good one. Peace.